Right, welcome everybody. Welcome back to the Sunday Spotlight. And tonight we have uh, something a little out of the ordinary for me. We've got Helen's Mysterious Castle on deck, an RPG Maker title that none other than Eyes himself has given me. Thank you very much, sir, mm -hmm. and per the agreement, I'm going in completely blind, so you have me at a disadvantage here. Oh, so. <laughs> Hello, Orange. Hey, Orange, thanks a bunch. <laughs> very generous of you. How's it going tonight? So yeah, you have a bit of a disadvantage here. I only glanced at the store page. I fired it up just to make sure that OBS picks it up. I think I will adjust the volume just a little bit here. So, yes, yeah. I will for the most part try not to tell you too much about what's coming up, but the game does have some weird puzzles and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I'm here in case uh, you know you actually get far enough to run into some of those. All right. So yeah, as you can see, we do get we have a pretty cold open. It dumps us right into gameplay here. Someone says you mustn't go near the North Ruins, so we we are definitely going exactly to those Northern Ruins. All right. Yes. The game has a yeah. The game is weird in its story that way. It starts you out with almost none whatsoever, and you kind of think you're just going into like a dungeon crawler. All right. Or something like that. But uh, gradually, more and more, as you you know progress through there, it will you know. You'll start seeing more like actual characters, more actual dialogue, and so and so on, right. until you know you get to the end where it suddenly dumps a whole bunch of story on you really, really fast. <laughs> <laughs> so it's sort of yeah, we're starting off basically knowing nothing and kind of intuiting what we know of the world. All right, so to close that after it's empty. All right, and yeah, as we get rolling, they'll reveal more of the plot. Interesting. Yeah, that's one thing I guess I'll go ahead and explain the basics of there. Helen has no actual stats of her own. It's all. It's all the. All the stuff has to do with uh, her equipment, and your that XP is, is used to look used to level up the equipment. Eight items of which you can hold at any one time, and they basically also represent your action, your available actions. Oh, so, interesting. That is quite there. a bit different than your. <laughs> oh, awesome! I just freaking property here. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so yeah, interacting, moving around, interacting the world will be a big deal, and as you say... Oop, I think... I thought I saw the NPC move there. Hmm. <laughs> I'll keep my eyes open. But yeah, we were obviously... Yeah. <laughs> quite a bit... <laughs> she definitely did, I hadn't seen that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, so this, there's going to be a high degree of interactivity with the environment, and... It, Hey, I'm hey, Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, we're fighting All right, some there you go. Your first battle. All right. All right, so we're fighting the slime here. Now, what got my attention with this originally when I caught someone else playing this on stream is the way the game keeps time. It's very much like you see in a real time game, uh, what a real time game would be doing under the hood, except this one is doing it in kind of a turn based fashion. Interesting. Yeah, I see there's a weight meter that kind of goes down with your actions, and I'm assuming that each action kind of has its own cost, and yeah. then eventually... The weight... Yeah. Yeah, the weight always goes down, yeah, the same for the same for each of you, so... Okay, cool. You know, it is basically like, you know, you can consider it like, you know, weight being like, you know, when it says nine, like nine seconds or whatever, you know, it's actually a lot faster than a second, but, you know, it doesn't matter, just some unit of time, basically. Interesting. <laughs> I note that our protagonist appears to be illiterate, which seems to be a bit of a concern. All right, so we've got a... Yes! Yes, I've never seen anything that she can read. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Karen. Bad things tend to happen that way. All right, so we've got another slime here. So, all right. All right. So one other thing I will say there, as you see, you've got yourself a wooden shield. Yeah. That does not give you defense just passively. The wooden shield is actually an action. It's your, it is a defense action. Yeah, yeah, you have to actually take action, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Ah. Okay, that's really clever. Yeah, that's what ma that's that's one of the big things that makes this very different from like because I have, I have tried to design systems like this before, but this game is clever in uh, you know doing that kind of defense action that I'd really never. Uh, I don't think I'd ever really thought of doing it that way before, so... Yeah, you don't see a lot of that <laughs> in RPG Maker titles. A lot of them just stick with kind of the default combat, but the idea of actually timing your actions... Fuck you, face. The idea of, <laughs> you know, timing your actions and having to actively react to an enemy, it's not something you see often in this generation, for lack of a better word, of uh, RPGs. Alright, let's see what this guy's deal is. 
Okay. Oh, you can't seem to speak to him? Oh, no, no, it's going in. Yeah, okay. it says, I live here teaching those I deem worthy how to defeat monsters. If you come across a new type of enemy, come talk to me. I'll give you a hint on how to defeat them. Okay, so this guy's kind of like our monster catalog. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Because, yes, if you finally get to the boss here, yeah, the boss is definitely designed to teach you one thing that is not at all intuitive, and it doesn't give you a lot of help to help to realize it there. Oh, but once you do realize how it works, how it works, it's, it's, it comes in important in a lot of other fights later in the game. <laughs> right, yeah, the big thing about RPG Maker is it is explicitly designed to make your stock JRPG, and it's entirely in how you script it, write it, and any art assets you, do, you create or import, and actually making a different battle system with it is tricky. It requires some pretty specific uh, messing with the available actions and the way those actions interact with enemy types. So it's doable, but you ha it's you have to know what you're doing, basically. Yeah, I'm kind of intrigued so far, because, yeah, um... Yeah, as you just saw, we had that fight with that unit for demon or whatever, and it was hitting me pretty hard, so... Learning the timing of blocking and countering with the right moves is obviously going to be a very important part of the game. I came to think of, like, every every single battle there was what I came to think of these as actually being, you know, more like puzzles than battles, in that um, there's, those, there's usually always some way to come out of it with, um, you know, either... No net, no net health loss or actually a health gain by the end of it. So, you know, that was kind of the way I ended up approaching it. It's like, how do I solve this puzzle to come out of this with, yeah, as much health as I started with or, you know, <laughs> even more. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. And it is clever. <clears throat> it's, it is clever. That hey, you... Roku and, hey, and Rin. Roku <laughs> and Rin, good to see you both. Yeah, it, it is clever that... As you say, your stats don't increase, so it's entirely dependent on your equipment and the skills you have. And actually, I can see that there's something there that appears inaccessible. The monster over there is hinting that there's a way to get to it. In fact, that's probably... There we go. Yeah. Yeah, this is also important there. The, uh, you know, it's got the, like, the Final Fantasy IV hidden, uh, hidden areas that you can go through. And you can, you can almost kind of see where it, where it is down here in the wall. There. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and it's important to know that this one, they're, they're not just for side content. Sometimes you have to find these. Ah, oh, so they're essential. Interesting. <laughs> so yeah, it reminds me, of all things, it reminds me of Age of Decadence, in that you, your character, in that game you do level up and get better skills, but your, your hit points don't increase at all, so every fight is potentially very dangerous, and carefully, you have to think of every single encounter as kind of a careful maneuvering of your skills through attacks you want to use. Oh, hey, Kirby. Hello, Kirby. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, actually, actually, yep, I, I, I misspoke when I said earlier that Helen has no stats for her own. Her HP will increase in some various ways, so. Right, yeah. That is independent of the equipment, but yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah, you're just, you're just improving your equipment. That's cool. You. I like that. <clears throat> Alright, so I got me a wall. The thing that I, I also mention you have to kind of ex you have to explicitly do that. You have to explicitly level up your equipment with the experience here. Uh, you know, oh, games, so. interesting. All right. Oop. If you hit your cancel button, that should bring up your uh, your menu. Game volume still a little loud here. I'll bump it down one more notch. It's... <laughs> Sadly, RPG Maker games, and this I'm not sure if this is made on anything modern or recent. It looks like it was probably VX Ace or. Although, I don't know if that had a native side view. I think that had to be modded in. But, uh, yeah, th that should be a little bit better now. A little banged up, but let me see if I can take on this. Actually, can I... Yeah, here we go. We'll save. Excellent. Yeah, actually, don't worry too much if you lose anything. You will just go back home. Oh, okay. So cool. don't worry too much. And it's actually... In a way, it actually helps you a little bit if you actually, you know, <laughs> if you actually let it do so. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. 
it's kind of interesting the way the wait timer functions, in that you're not necessarily guaranteed a set amount of time between its next attack. It sort of depends on what it does and what you do. Like, I'm noticing if I take a hit, I get a longer wait time, but if I manage to block it, its next attack tends to be a it looks like. Or at least in the case of the skeleton. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it's tempting to try the long sword, but something tells me. This well, the is thing to keep in mind there is more that, like, when you um, when you're using your shield there, you're going to defend for the whole time, regardless of whether you get hit or not. Right. And yeah. that's why the uh, that's why the wait timer will still go down after you get hit. Yeah. I see. You know? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, because you're still counting off the seconds to the next turn. That that actually makes sense. Yep. Yeah, so that's something you have to consider when you're doing that there. This is uh, very much this is pretty much the point of, uh, you know, yeah, working in the times of uh, your actions and so on. So, yeah. Clever. Very clever. <laughs> My volume's a little low. Uh, hang on a second. Ah, shit. One little more adjustment. Just as soon as I uh, stop dying here. Right. Come on, skeleton man. There we go. Yeah, there will be times where you won't be able to, you know, do that whole, um, you know, come out of it with health the same, you know, unless you've, you know, upgraded your equipment some. So, you know, yeah, yeah it is a traditional RPG in that way there. Sometimes you need the added added stats from upgrading the equipment to <laughs> come right. out of it without the damage. So now, do you have to go someone <laughs> to someone in particular to upgrade your equipment? Nope. OK, so it can nope. be done just bring up your menu. Just bring up your menu. Yep. Oh. All right, cool. <laughs> oh, I see here. Yeah, so we can level up our longbow. Nice. Level up three. Oh, I see. Yeah, there's an experience cost. Mm -hmm. Rad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That last critical hit point. That's all, that's the only one that counts. <laughs> <laughs> right, just a sec. I'm going to fiddle with my mic volume here a little. Weirdly enough, the volume mixer for this game is nearly at the bottom. Like, this is three... It, it, it is, is loud. It is. Yeah, yeah. the game's, game's base volume is loud. <laughs> All right. That should do a little bit better then. All right. All right, so we've upgraded some equipment. And let's fight Mr. Skeleton Man here. At last, we meet again. All right, so... Doing slightly more damage there. Oh, thanks, Kirby. I appreciate it. Ah, yeah. Shit. Now, if you take a look, you can you can get a look at the uh, look at the big difference between, say, the longbow and the sword. There. Oh yes. Longer wait, but a fair bit more damage. You're not. You're still missing the uh, the important difference then. Oh, the defense. Oh. Yep. <laughs> so. Yep. It gives you a chance to both attack and defend at the same time. So oh. yeah, you can defend waiting for the while you're waiting for the attack to happen. So. Sometimes those, are, sometimes that's very useful, and yeah, some of the enemies, that's the correct way to beat them is uh, use that use that sword. <laughs> ah, okay. So you need that to strike back and uh, defend yourself at the same time. Yep. Right. I see a glowing magic. That is not always the correct answer, but sometimes that's yeah exactly what you want to do. <laughs> Interesting. All right. All right. Let's try it on this goblin here. Does it? Wait for it. Hey, all right. All right, so we got some more of these guys. Yeah, come to think of it, I honestly have not played all that many uh, RPG Maker games. Like, I'm trying to think of the last one I really got into. It's been a while. 
But it is kind of fascinating, the stuff they come up with. You, you see often what people... What a lot of people do is essentially is shoot the RPG mechanics entirely and make, like, adventure games or visual novels out of them. You see a lot of horror games that basically use the concept. Like, I think, um... Uh... There's a really... There's a reasonably well-known one that I'm thinking of. I think it was Sweet Home or something that is technically an RPG mess game. It's just kind of a full-on, uh, horror title. <laughs> Hey, Zero! Hey, Zero! Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> interesting so far. Very timing dependent on this thing. Ah, shit. Got cocky there. Yeah, I do have some emojis. Help yourself and give it a try. Alright. <laughs> Alright, Skellington got me there. Hey, well, what's her face made us a steak? <laughs> yes. So you know, this is important. Ah, uh, ooh, my exact HP is increased. Very helpful. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why it can, why it's sometimes beneficial to just take the defeat instead of reloading. So, <laughs> ah, you know, the, the so downside being you got to go back through the you know the levels and many of the fights you did before. Right, some some yeah. fights won't won't respawn, but yeah, the random ones will. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a, yeah. Okay, mm. so your gear has your gear stays with you. Now, um, okay, so it is possible to drop equipment. Uh, I'm assuming most of this stuff eventually gets replaced, and so you want to mine what you upgrade, basically. Some things. You don't really have to worry too much about that because you're going to be getting enough experience to be like upgrading most of the things you get. But um, yeah, sometimes you'll get stuff that's better, but a lot of it is in this game kind of more, not so much that new equipment is necessarily better, but that it's different. Okay, so it's got different functions, wait time and such. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So... <laughs> And yeah, that, that's that's the thing. I... RPG Maker is a perfectly fine tool, and a lot of people can make some really interesting things with it, but it does have that kind of toy box mentality where it's easy to learn, but it can take a fair bit of effort to make a product out of it, to make, to make something... To, to make something distinct and have it in a playable state. I, I think the the larger point is that people kind of underestimate the difficulty of putting together even a simple game, and it's it's well equipped for doing that. Although I think it kind of varies from one version to the other, but you do need to go in with an idea rather than expecting an idea to emerge just from playing with it. Game development, it exactly that is the stick. And it actually has varied a bit from one version to the next, like, VX Ace came with a fair bit of built-in, uh, pre-built assets, or more specifically, they had, like, a full chart of abilities and enemies, and had all best gear ready. It was pretty much if you wanted to make, an, make a standard JRPG, it was built out of the box, whereas the following version, MV, it had the assets for it, but you had to put together a lot of attacks and effects and such yourself, and... It was a little more. It was a little more of a blank canvas, basically, which was interesting. But I think it could be potentially a bit more intimidating to get into. Yeah, that's just one one minor thing I do want to point out, and that Carl showed just like a little bit ago there. When uh, your your weight and the uh, monster's weight uh, hits zero at the same time, Helen always goes first. Yeah, that's a nice little uh, nice little stop. For, uh, a nice little backstop there. So as, as long as you've got just enough time for the attack, you will make the attack, and there's no real guessing about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm always kind of interested in games that take unorthodox approaches to character development rather than the simple act of just fighting monsters over and over again and your stats build up in a pretty linear fashion. In this case, yeah, you have to invest in your equipment, and it's more about your specific actions. 
Like, there aren't many that do that. My mind actually keeps going back to, of all things, the Stalker series, which is entirely dependent on the weapons, armor, and artifacts you equip yourself with. Technically, you're as vulnerable at the end of the game as you are at the start of it. You're just wearing much better armor or can take the uh, standard weapon. You can take more hits as a function of that. And yeah, actually, Age of Decadence is like that as well, where a lucky hit can bypass your armor and still put you down even from a basic enemy. <laughs> quite uncle. Alright. I'm gonna make it my quest to poke at every interactable item in this game. Fuck you, pottery. <laughs> All right. Oh, yes. Yes, you should always be breaking the pottery. Yes. Zelda style, baby. Oh, thank you, Kirby. Don't mind if I do. Mm. All right. So we got us a Tome of Thunder. Ooh. Ooh, defense piercing. Nice. But it has a weight of 20. Price. That means it won't always be all that useful. Right. It can still be, yeah, very handy, especially the up... There is an upgrade to that one called uh, Wrath of Zeus that you'll get at some point that's much, much more powerful. And, yeah, that one is uh, definitely ah. needed at times. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right on, Kirby. I'm just switching to water for tonight. I, I, I had my coffee earlier, but... Uh, anyway, looks like we have an enemy we can actually try this thunder thing on, so let's give it a whirl. <laughs> yep, we got the mummy on us. I see, yeah. This thing is less vulnerable to weapons, or at least your longbow. That's, yeah, that's the kind of thing that's where magic is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, where yeah, that's the right thing about, that's the thing about, about magic. Yeah, it's particularly risky. You will have, like, no defense when you're casting a spell, so... Yeah. Alright, looks like we're coming up on a boss thing in the center of this. Yeah, so the spells yeah, are high risk, high reward there. So, <laughs> so not really, not really necessarily high risk in this one, since you can know if the enemy's gonna hit you in time or not. But <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, so, it's clearly giving you really got to plan when to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's clearly giving you time to make the decisions. All right, all right, so we're going in. Looks like we got us a golem here. Let's give it a poke and let's see how much kind of time we've got. Yeah, that's always awkward. The first time, first, uh, first turn where you don't know what they're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so his attack can get through the shield. That's a bit of an issue. I'm assuming it, that's that's a point where you'd want to upgrade it in order to better do mm. this. Yeah, he will eventually deal with more of these, but this guy's kind of like more of a mini boss at this point. So. Got it. <laughs> Is vulnerable to thunder. That's good. All right. All right. Let's give him one more zap. Nice. All right. All right. Pretty straightforward there. So now we're on this next dungeon floor. Our protagonist still can't read. I'm assuming... I'm assuming she's Helen, although it doesn't actually say, so there yeah. could very well be a twist there. Yeah, she is Helen. Okay, so. good, good. That's the game will eventually, eventually verify that. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does have that kind of look to him. Yep, and Helen is indeed the silent protagonist. She speaks entirely in question marks and exclamation points. <laughs> See, I, I like I like the silent protagonist when they're actually mute and the game kind of acknowledges it. Like, I'd be very interested in a game where the protagonist actually has to communicate with, like, writing or sign language or something, or they have, like, an interpreter, and the game kind of incorporates that into their character. Or yeah, Pottery is indeed an invention of the board game. <laughs> yes. Exactly, yeah. Indeed. 
filthy luxuries. We're not going to need them in our glorious utopia. <laughs> All right. All right, so Mumbo over here is definitely hitting harder. Just come to your house, bringing all your shits and leaving. Yes! Yes, indeed. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be just rude. I mean, taking the stuff, I can understand, but going in just to wreck the place? Man. <laughs> I'm just saying maybe the proletariat are animals and need to be put in their place. I don't want to say anything controversial here, but yes. <laughs> Alright, so we got us a, it's like a zombie thing here. Interesting, yeah. So that's that's a neat idea. I would appreciate a game that actually did something with that. Or worked around the protagonist having to manage nonverbal forms of communication. Yep. Hey, Tim. You finished with your mats out there? <laughs> Alright, so we got some broadsword here, it looks like. It's interesting. I'm liking it. it mm -hmm. Eyes is explaining to me how combat works. It's essentially, you're taking... It, it basically takes the turn-based aspects of it and gives it a timer that different actions take more of. So here, we'll get into a fight with this guy and... Yeah, you see, that's one of those cases where I just told you, like, sometimes equipment isn't j isn't always an really so much an improvement, it's just different. That's kind of the case with the longsword and the broadsword there. They're both, you know, they both can fill the same role, but the broadsword's a little bit slower, a little higher damage. Yeah, yeah, you can see the you values know. down here, so... Yeah, in this case, yeah. the longsword is a good offensive... Uh, it's good at offense, mm -hmm. but also provides me some defense, but it's also got acid coming up, and that's going to be piercing. So... I don't think I can take it yep. down in time. It's concerning. I might just have to take the hit here. We shall see. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand what you mean. Sometimes you just need to... I suppose defense is pointless in this case. Sometimes you just need to disconnect and not stare at a screen for a while. But yeah, glad you're doing all right. Yeah, piercing enemies are a problem at this phase of the game. You don't have any... You have no real def real defense other than trying to eliminate them quickly, and... Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I'm assuming there's, like, a different countermeasure for that, where possibly you'd, like, try to avoid it or something. It's, well, probably the countermeasure you'd think it is. <laughs> Attack fast. Reactive instead of proactive. <laughs> well, there you go. You know what? It's just... What I, I need to get into that black mage mentality where all that matters is just doing as much damage as fast as possible and <laughs> everything else is a secondary concern, including dodging. Well, what I mean is you'll eventually get a heal spell, so... Oh, okay, okay, good. Well, that, that's that's fine, too, but... Okay. All right, so this guy's just giving us a little tutorial thing on the floor below us. There's totally a hidden room. Thank you, sir. Mr. Blue-haired man who appears to have made a home in yes, this dungeon. Yes, hey, very... Yeah, pay very good attention. Pay big attention to him, yes. He's trying to reveal something very important to you. <laughs> Whoa, wait. Will Smith just punched Chris Rock in the face at the Oscars? Is, like, seriously? What? What? Okay, we're, we are going to fact check this real quick. Sit tight. I don't see anything in the news yet. Interesting. Twitter, you wouldn't lie to me about this, would you? Maybe it hasn't updated yet. Maybe it just literally just happened. We'll get a few minutes and we will check again. I'm 
Morbidly curious. I mostly don't pay attention to it much, but I do kind of like keeping tabs on what happens just in case there's like something spectacle happen. There's, there's some kind of spectacle. Like when, like that one time when Moonlight won instead of La La Land, but they got it backwards and they had to sort of improvise. I find it entertaining when people have to go off script and improvise around the situation. Okay, Zero's got the story there. Let's finish this fight real quick. Okay, we've won our fight. Let's go see what happened between these two. All right. Will Smith uh, Will Smith punches Chris Rock at the Oscars and yells, "Keep my wife's name out of your expletive deleted mouth." It says it's fucking, but it's got that asterisk there. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me, says the comedian. Will Smith yelled at Chris Rock to keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth after punching the comedian in the arm. The unexpected moment occurred during the 94th Academy Awards, which are taking place Sunday night. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see you. Quip the comedian on stage at the ceremony. Jada Pinkett Smith could be seen eye-rolling at the joke. The comment prompted Smith to stand up and walk on stage, causing Rock to joke, uh-oh. After Will Smith hits Rock in the arm, he walks off stage and proceeds to take his seat. Okay, so I was... It, it looks like it was like a punch in the arm or something. It's, or he, he went for the arm, or he went for the head and hit the arm or something. I was expecting like a full-on just deck to the face. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> apparently this really happened. I'm gonna have to look for video after the show. This sounds wild. Anyway, we got an adventure here. <laughs> it kind of does from the picture there. Okay, so it kind of, it, yeah, they're, they're probably still just reacting to it. Anyway, it looks like we got us a human to fight here. Show me. Prove to me that you are ready. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god, look at this. Okay, I know there's a stream lag here, so yeah, when we get there, this... We're, we're fighting some kind of bobblehead dude, or like, uh... What is... Okay, I I don't I, I don't even I don't even think I remember this. You might you might have found something I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't even know where to begin here. Okay, so okay, so we got a dude. What is this? I don't, oh. I, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> okay, uh, something tells me. Oh shit, his sh that my shield takes exactly the amount of wait time his sword has. So we're going to have to fight and see whose Schwartz is bigger. Oh, shit. Okay, this is definitely some kind of boss. This dude's fucking me up. <laughs> yeah, the, the boss's name is what is this? Okay, yeah, he, he's, he's gonna destroy me. Screw it, I'm waiting in Valhalla. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I totally don't remember what this is. <laughs> I, I don't think I saw it. Oh, man. Uh, okay, yeah. I, you know what? I'm on board. Like, at first, the game was merely interesting just because of its combat. Obviously, the story stuff would come in later. But it's got a sense of humor to it, too. And that has me interested. So, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Octal. I appreciate being witness. All right, let, let me see <laughs> if... Let's see if our monster encyclopedia friend... Okay, uh... Advanced course. Yeah, there's there's a, there's a chest there, but he already opened it there. Unfortunately, it it always looks closed when you go yeah there, yeah. So I, there's nothing in it. That's where I got my long. Nothing though. in it anymore. <laughs> okay, a smack instead of a punch. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Okay, so this is kind of nice. He does actually give you little tips on every character, on every monster you fight, and you know if you're paying attention, you can actually see them. Uh, you, you can you can see the attack patterns they use and figure out a strategy for them. But it's nice to have something in text for 
identifying that. Like, yeah, did you notice that skeletons all seem to fight using nice long swords? It's a good idea to prepare for all types of enemies, but sometimes you just have to believe in yourself. Well, there you go. <laughs> See what he says about our uh, big headed friend back there. Okay, no, I, I, I'm assuming I have to beat the uh, Funko Pop bad guy or whatever the hell he is. Yeah, he might not uh, tell you about him. <laughs> yeah, before he'll give me information. I don't know. It's It sounded like it was just kind of spur of the moment thing. It sounds like. I don't know. It, it sounds like Smith just lost his cool. Hard to say. I will wait for the Twitter hot takes and the memes to take over. The internet will tell me how to feel about this. Okay, yeah, that's probably has something to do with it. All right, let's uh, strong protective sword. Okay, so the broadsword does offer more protection, but it's a much longer swing. We'll put some points into that. We'll give it a try. Yeah, for what it's worth, I did end up uh, choosing the broadsword over the long sword. All right, but I don't, you know. I don't think it's necessarily, yeah, so much an improvement over it as it's just, yeah, slightly different. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of an alternative. Mm. All right. I saw you, ghost. Where'd you go? Mm, he's got a stun. Oh, and he's got a piercing. The bastard. Yeah, yeah, I was talking about G.I. Jane, too, which, granted, I haven't thought about that movie, like, I, I barely, I had to think for a minute to remember what it even was. I believe it was the meme more that was in it. But yeah, that, I, that, I would, I would, I have not thought about that movie in over a decade. I would not have expected that to get a sequel. So, yes, I, I get where the humor comes from. Anyway. <laughs> Just go from broadsword to longsword here. Fuck it, dual wielding. <laughs> <laughs> it it might have been a thing where he just made a joke about it and the non existence of the movie is the joke itself. We'll see. Again, the internet will tell us how to feel. I notice we're on a... We appear to have uh, diverging paths here. I mean, there was the stairs that led to the big head guy, but there also seemed to be another path there. Are there multiple ways down to whatever our objective is, or is there, like, one path that will eventually lead us to it? Um... Um... Kind of multiple in this case. There's, you know, but... Not, like, in a big way, so... Okay. Yeah. So just kind of your standard your standard RPG dungeon where there's other paths to explore. They mostly just lead to extra loot and such. No, there's nothing he can do with the coffins. Okay. <laughs> However, under rare circumstances, a mummy might come out of him, but that's that's, that's not yeah, that does not happen very often. Got it. This is an unusual case here where you have to choose one door or the other there with those two Coleman rooms. Got it. <laughs> Apparently Denzel Washington did a pull Will Smith way and ever coming back put his armor on Jada. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yep. We are going to get some Photoshop action about this and it's going to be great. <laughs> Oop, oh, there's a ghost right behind him. Ah. 
Damn it! Oh yeah, shades aren't kidding around. They act quickly. Okay, yeah, so it was just a joke then. That makes sense. Okay, so you're saying the golden doors have to pick one or the other? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anything in the way? Oh, I see. It's kind of a loop D, and that's the other stairs go yep. down there. I gotcha. All right. Yep. We'll, we'll stay with these. We'll pick this one then. You must choose. Behind each golden door lies a wonderful treasure. But one chest is open, the other will be locked for all eternity. Choose wisely. <laughs> Done. Ooh, power bangle. All right. Increases effect power by one. All right. Okay, so I can't mm. level that up. Assuming that's just oh, that's it. interesting. So yeah, you definitely got something different than I did. Hmm. Ah, you took the left path. Yeah, or yeah, I must have. So I got something different. All right. It's right, gonna see. be interesting with some of the upcoming fights, though. I wonder what that. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> All right. I'm getting a prompt oh. here, which I'm assuming is before a boss. Yep, you are definitely uh, before the boss here. Oh boy, okay. Well, this isn't gonna end well. I'm gonna give you a few times to the. Or, well, I might just give you like one because it'll take you a while to get back for here. But yeah, if you if you don't get it, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. All right. <laughs> this guy works. Got it. Alright, I'll poke him with a bow, see what kind of time I've got here. Yeah, the power bank will be interesting because it's passive, so... Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's basically a chicken cat. Yeah, I think what it is is it's giving my weapons more wolf. Yeah, it looks like everything has a much higher effect now. Fortunately, probably not enough to save me. Yep, no, that got me. I think I'll have to hit that thing at full health and probably some more upgraded equipment. That's all right. Whoever this green haired green haired girl is, she is very understanding. Like fetches us out of the dungeon and has a stake waiting for us when we get there. Very considerate. Yeah, we go make us some chicken tendies. All right. All right, this is where I let you know here. Some enemies, as you're paying attention to what they're doing, some enemies pay attention to what you're doing. Really? You do tell. So you, they they choose different actions based on what you're choosing? Yep, basically, yep, whatever you have up at the time that their weight comes down there, they may change their action based on what you're doing. Well, now, that's fascinating. <laughs> All right, let's keep that in mind, then. <laughs> oh, it's getting on the news? Oh, man. <laughs> Nothing else that will definitely be something to talk about for the rest of the show. And, you know, you, you gotta figure that they have some contingency plans for if something happens. Like, if there's like if there's a fight, or if there's something that interrupts, or if somebody gets sick and the presenters have to plan around that, I have to assume there's some kind of contingency plans for that. But Or this is or this is just them desperately increasing their increasing viewership for the playing like, Oscars. Th that is also a possibility. Like, if I were a, <laughs> if I were a conspiracy-minded sort, I would wonder if this was a way to get to get more people actually watching this show. Because I, I don't know exactly... I don't know what's the case, but it's my broad understanding that viewership has kind of been down over the years. Oh man, he should have done it with a dueling glove. Just, you know, full on, <laughs> I challenge you to a duel, sir. You have besmirched the honor of my wife and you shall pay for it. Okay, so yeah, the two paths lead to Big Head Guy and uh, Cat Chicken. So I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to assume. Yeah, I'm not the Cat Chicken is the one. Is the I'm pretty sure the Cat Chicken is the one you need to progress. I'm yeah. sure that uh, Big Head Guy is something else. Yeah. <laughs> Some kind of bonus boss, apparently. All right.
Yeah, I could see that happening. Uh, he's not a cat, chicken, chicken, cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chicken, cat. There you go. <laughs> sure. All right, so let's heal up. We'll do our best to get to the bottom floor with full health, so we've got all our options in dealing with the uh, cat, or the chicken cat. Oh, wait a minute. I saw that. There's a open section of the wall. Yeah, yeah. Alright, now let's see what's in this thing. Ooh, I got me a wing guard. The shield is light as a feather. Awesome! So yeah, it's a... Yeah, less wait time on the shield for less defense. That seems like a fair trade. I'm gonna refresh quick. My stream delay has gotten quite bad. No problem. <laughs> State plan. <laughs> Australia and Japan didn't censor them. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's they they're probably hearing it in a language and then they have to translate and that's when the censorship comes in. <laughs> without too many fights. Oh. And of course I walk right into a mummy for that. Right, took a dig, but I think that'll be okay. Yeah, the enemies get a little bit sneaky here, and I, I do kind of like it in role-playing games when they actually represent the enemies you fight in, in the world, where they're not just strictly random encounters. It's acceptable in older titles, but I feel like the genre has basically moved on, and more or less the Tales model is the way to go for that. Anyway, we're back to our boss here. Let's save one more time. I noticed that the save file is named Area Between Skulls and Gold, so that's... <laughs> that actually, I just noticed, yeah, we're walking out a whole bunch of skeletons here. That's charming. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like, it, it sounds like he was probably under a lot of stress or something. Anyway, time to fight the chicken cat. We making ten days tonight, boys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Alright, so... Uh, remember what the guy said about slow weapons. Right, yeah. So be real careful, because he does... As he's... I'm assuming that this boss is... Does the thing you mentioned, where it's, It mixes up its attacks depending on what you fall on. Mm -mm. Yep, right. to win this fight, you have to manipulate his AI, so, yep. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Okay, so my wood shield is good enough to eat its damage, but it eat its hits without taking damage. Good. Unfortunately, it's got a piercing attack coming up, so... Yep, you see, you gotta, um... So I 
probably have to hit it hard early on. With no, I would, I would, not yet. What I would do is hit, go with like your longsword or broadsword there. You're going to take this hit, but you should see what happens when you use one of those. Ah, all right. Ah, of course he put his guard up. Oh, wait a minute, that sounds like a magic time. Yep. Wanted to put his guard up. Ah, clever. <laughs> Damn. Uh, it's gonna be hunter. You don't have the trusty dagger, so. Damn. Oh, is the dagger what was in the other one? Yep. Yeah, the trusty dagger is a nice one. It's a low damage weapon, but it pierces. Ah, right. All right, let us reload that. Uh, yeah, I'm a little less certain how you're gonna how you're gonna have to how you can deal with this guy without him. Um, uh, we yeah, probably most likely you'll have to get him to dodge and then try to time your attacks between between his attacks going. Something like that. We shall have to... We will find a way. Oh, hang on a second. Oh, well. All right, this health booster will help a little bit. <laughs> All right, I can't find a way to quit, aside from probably just exiting out of the program. So let's see if I can hustle one more time. Oh, we got a dash. <laughs> All right, let me see if he says anything about the boss chicken. <laughs> Okay, Griffin means big trouble. They're smart and they're fast. If he's a slow attack, you're going to be in trouble. If there's no such thing as an invincible enemy, it takes time for them to prepare their next attack, after all. Okay. Oh, shit. Damn it. Fair bit involved. I like what they're doing with him giving you advice and such. Oh, oh thank you, Kirby. Don't mind if I do. Uh, let's see. How's my experience doing? Yeah, let's level everything up. See if we can avoid fights. There's gotta be. Oh, damn. Okay, so the ghosts can hide on you. That's Trixie. Oh, thanks, Octal. I appreciate it. <laughs> damn it. Screw you, Harpy. Double back. I'll see if I can heal up. Oh, okay, now we're doing better. All right, down we go. There we go. Okay, got to the boss. We're at full health. We got this. We can do this. <laughs> I'll check it out at the stream. Yeah, that's... Again, I'm looking forward to seeing what the internet does with this. This has been your RPG Maker slash Hollywood Variety Hour with K Stoles and Eyes. Thanks for coming. Now. Alright. Go ahead, chicken cat. Yes. Right. It's time we fry the chicken cat. Alright, see ya, boy. Come here. What you might have to do is use the long bow in between there without it being so long there. Because yeah, remember, once, yeah. his, once his weight goes up, that defense also goes down. So <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, alright. We will 
back up a tick, and since I will see no other way to restart the game, just a second. That's yep. a lot of cows, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going through a fair bit of steak. I'm not gonna lie. I wonder if there's something that happens after you die so many times, like they give you something special to get help your survival. Anyway, uh, yeah, we'll try a longbow. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, that, that's, 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 that, yeah, that's rude. <laughs> Context. The joke about G.I. Jane was due to Jada Smith losing her hair, apparently. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, that's not cool. That, that is just a bit below the belt. Alright, so, it's piercing. Alright, let's try this. Maybe I could tank through this. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Lord is my witness, I will find a way past the chicken cat. <laughs> I hunger. Okay, so. So it does its claw. Let me try the wing guard. Okay. The problem is, if I pick a heavy attack, it's going to shift to defense, and I don't have any piercing. Let's try this. <laughs> exactly, zero. Alright, so I think it's gonna nickel and dime me to death if I keep going wing guard, so let's do the wood machine instead. Alright, now it shifts to piercing attack. That's a good time to use thunder. Alright. Oh. Okay, I think I see how I think I see how we play this. Alternate between defense and magic, and that sh we should be able to outlast it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. All right. One more shot should do it. I think we'll just barely survive this. Oh, you son of a whore! Oh, close though. We're on the right track here. Okay, everything seems to be back to normal. Uh, synchronization. It is difficult. One day we'll hit the singularity and this won't be an issue. Yep, this would have been so much easier if you had lucked out and gotten the dagger. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I see why. You basically stab and dab. You sort of dart it, hit it, trigger its defense, then use your magic. But anyway, I, I think I see what we gotta do here, so yeah. With the trusty dagger, yeah, with that being piercing, that's what I would I would basically oh, do is yeah, bait it in the defense. Bait it in defense, hit trusty dagger, and then uh yeah, trigger the again, use the broadsword to trigger its defense when yeah. you know it's about to when the defense is about to end. So that Yeah, it would make a pretty big difference. Okay. Alright, so wood shield. Now it's gonna hit us with wind, so we hit it with counter with thunder. Again. Thunder again. Ah, shit. Once again, we get very close, but it's just not enough. Uh. Oh, so she actually has a condition that led to the herald. Okay, yeah, that's... Yeah, that makes it that makes it worse. That is not cool. Come on, you funky bird thing. Okay, so how about this? If we try longsword. Okay, so that gets it to guard. Zap it. Okay, I think I'm 
might have something. Alright, I think we got this. Finally. <laughs> you whore! Alright. Come here, you. I got a taste. <laughs> Come on, Zero. Have a little faith in me. I totally got this this time. Did I mention I'm two <laughs> days to retirement? Yeah, after I finish this, I'm gonna go home and marry my high school sweetheart. Here, let me show a picture of you. Oh, ooh, it blew up into no man's land. Hang on, I'm gonna go get it. I think it might be disappearing bet with every restart. Probably because of the way it was set up. For some reason, I couldn't do a straight game capture on it, and I'm not sure why. Okay, it seems to be showing up now. It, in OBS, at least. Give it a second here. There it goes. Yep. Editing this is going to be fun. <laughs> All right. Come here, you little beastie. All right, so how about this? Let us... I think we're onto something with the longsword magic combo. Actually, here's what we'll do. Poke it once, just so we got the Block. Block again. Alright. Now we hit it with thunder. Oh, god damn, it baited me. Alright. There is an option to give up. That appears eventually. See if I can back out of this fight. There we go. Okay, that just automatically sends you back out. Bollocks. Okay, how about this? I'm gonna fight my way down there one last time. Put all the XP I have into, we'll say, broadsword or something. Pump up the defense. So we're a little better off when we finally get to the boss. Yes, chat hungers for them tendies, and God is my witness, I will deliver. Our Twitch success will probably be money. Should we go into maintenance and master services? Yep, good pause. Could yeah. definitely be. Entirely possible. Hey, Kren, I finished up the Lost Belt. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I understand. I understand Olympus goes some freaking places. Okay, so let's do this. Let us upgrade the wing guard. So that we've got a slightly better defensive option with less wait time. Save, and in we go. Alright. So let me see if the wing guard can defend perfectly. It can. Good, good, good. That gives us two magic. Cast thunder. Oh, there's a lot of talking bits for that section. Yeah, good to know. Alright, so... Want defenses up when we swing. Still doing that. That's annoying. Yeah, this this Lost Belt in particular, there's been a lot of dialogue and plot happening. I think kind of as a as a kind of as a consequence of not a lot of forward motion so far. Like there's been a lot of developments, but it's mostly just establishing the threat and the characters and moving pieces around the board without actually taking a lot off. All right, let's try. Shit. Oh, damn it. Oh, I fucked that up. Nah, this ain't gonna work. Hey. Safe's coming. 
Yeah, looking forward to wrapping it up. I need to... The spoilers have been tantalizing. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's focus here. Very close to finishing this guy, but the movement restriction is really tight. It's reminded me of Helltaker all of a sudden, where there's like one specific pattern you need to rely on. Actually, let's try this. Okay. Up. Get it with magic. Wait, how much is your how much does your damage does your longbow do right now? Uh, I think just five. Ah, oh, speaking of which. Oh, it's fifteen. The effect is fifteen. So interesting. Okay. And uh, does he claw every time you use a shield? Not every time, but the majority of the time, it seems. Right, so you've only got a defense of nine in that case. Maybe you nickel and dime him with the uh, longbow. Keep trying to manipulate him into claw and uh, yeah, do the idea. longbow when you have enough uh, time there. Yeah. <laughs> Might actually work. Not quite, but we're getting there. Alright, let me reset one more time. You're definitely onto something. Yeah, that thunder is powerful, but yeah, sometimes it's the shorter actions that are... Yeah. Oftentimes it's the shorter actions that are better. <laughs> Chipping away at him. Because <laughs> right. that is basically how the trusty dagger, dagger strategy works on him there. It's, you know, yeah, ship him yeah. down. <laughs> Alright, so... Longbow... Nice opening with wind. Interesting. Yeah, that might be uh, RNG determined. All right. Now we block. Now we got time for an attack before we claw. Block again. Okay, yeah, he's doing claw a lot when he blocks. So. Yeah. Might be onto something. Maybe we got this. Alright, so he's gonna cast me anyway. Might as well swing. Oh. Now shields up for the claw. Shields up for the next claw. Ooh, this might do it. Shields up for this claw. Oh, I think we can do this. Here we go, I think this is it. Yes! <laughs> Eyes, you're a genius. Good thinking, brother. Oh, man, finally. Finally, we got us some chicken tendies. There you go. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yep. All right, let's see what's behind this door here. Oh, yeah, we eating good tonight. <laughs> hey, here we go. We have plot, finally. Helen, what are you doing here? There's something we really need to talk about. Oh, finally, some exposition. <laughs> All right, so we're following our green-haired, apparently elf companion. Are you looking forward to your adventure? Yep. In fact, yeah, that, in fact, that is exactly what she is. She's an elf. <clears throat> oh, okay, cool. You must be so excited about going back. And I think you're an elf, too. <laughs> I think so, yeah, it appears to be. <laughs> to the world below, to your home. To where you grew up. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we're getting a Skyrim port back to the surface. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oftentimes you end up getting shortcuts opened up once you complete a, uh, you know, a portion there, so. Well, that's cool. That's one nice thing. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> you should eat some so I made you steak. <laughs> <laughs> nice of her. Helen. How's the steak? <laughs> ah, right. You want to keep exploring, don't you? Please be careful out there. 
Okay, so our first actual snippet of plot. I think I'll eat her steak <laughs> too. There we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Green haired girl will remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll always be here for you, sis. Oh, she's her sister. Okay, no matter what. Okay, so my understanding is we're going to go through several dungeon loops, and every time we're going to get new snippets of dialogue, exp uh, unlock different areas of the dungeon. Kind of. I believe after the next one, you'll actually move into town, and you won't be okay. seeing her as much. Okay. So. That's cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I like what this <laughs> game is doing. Like, it's obviously beating that Griffin was kind of fiddly and required getting a sense for what it does and how to react, but the game kind of mm -hmm. expects you to fail and learn its attack patterns and come back stronger, and I like that as well. Yep. It's, it's, it's very breezy in tone and presentation, and it's doing something unique with this combat, and I'm actually kind of curious where it's going to go with its story. So this is really yep, cool. I like this a lot. That's what it is. Learning the moveset and learning, uh, you know, the way to use your tools to counter their moveset. So, yes. Cool. Very much, yeah, very much more of a yeah battle system that feels much more like a puzzle game in a way. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of like that. Thanks a bunch, guys. This is really cool. <laughs> Definitely going to poke at this a little bit more. But I believe that's about time. We shall wrap it up the stream for tonight. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, eyes, very much for the game and for the cool commentary. Saturday, we will be getting back to Alpha Protocol. Obviously, next Sunday, we will be off. And Tuesday, hopefully, uh, Hat and Time will be back up with his multiplayer. So, eyes and I. Can yeah, I believe I believe it is. Good. There's been good. no official announcement, but I've seen some messages from people saying they are seeing people in online party again. So, excellent. <laughs> with yeah. any luck, we will be back to that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to it. I like that game a lot but yeah thanks for coming everybody have a good night and see you next time